minutes long. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Call this meeting of the Bucks County Commission is June 16th, 2021, to order. And we would ask our Director of Corrections, Chris Paroli, to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance this morning. The Pledge of Allegiance is the flag of the United States of America, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. And a quick hello to, we have a couple of row offices here, if they just want to introduce themselves. Good morning, Ms. Lauder, registered as Judy Reese, Thank you. So if you're hearing some noise, I don't know if the microphone is picking up, but we have some furry guests here today. So we'll start right away with that. We would like to read a proclamation to, or I'm not sure we have a proclamation, but we do have the Bridge Clinic here today to talk to us about kittens, why we should not drop kittens in a park or abandon them, and that we have a lot of kittens up for adoption. So, Michelle and Chase, would you like to come up and... And we need you to get one of them, so... I know, that's why we have Liz. She's going to help us. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have She's ready to come out. So as we're getting ready to start, the Bridge Clinic has been a partner with the county with our feral cat, feral cat project in Core Creek for years. We wouldn't be able to have done that without you. So thank you. Maybe you'll mention that too. Absolutely. So yeah, we can uh, start out. First off, thank you so much to the Board of Commissioners for having us today and having all of our friends here today. So uh, we can go to the next slide. Thank you, Randy. So just really quickly who we are, we are a nonprofit veterinary clinic and rescue, um, so basically a shelter organization, and we have full service locations in both Ben Salem and Newtown, so right here in Bucks County. Um, and basically we are, as a nonprofit, we offer affordable services for veterinary services, and we have the Connected Rescue Program, so we're able to offer a lot of rescue services uh, in the Bucks County and greater Bucks County area as well. Um, so right now, the clinics are in Newtown and Ben Salem, and our rescue um, is in Ben Salem. Go next. This is our, just a quick overview, this is our Ben Salem location. <clears throat> so we're really excited about this because of um, where Ben Salem is situated and just the, how we can become a community hub uh, for that area. Um, as we can get into a little bit later, we do a lot of the um, apartment complexes. We even monitor uh, different colonies uh, of cats throughout Street Road corridor, as well as some of the mobile home parks in the area as well. So this is our Ben Salem Clinic. It's located on a 10-acre property um, in Ben Salem. We can go to the next. This is the property that the crazy cat people purchased. Um, so it's a former day camp, um, and we really envision this as a community hub. We are in the process of constructing it. Um, on the far uh, end, you'll see that that's where our rescue is, the top left corner. Um, our clinic is also located there. Um, some of the plans of the area we just want to highlight, we're going to have Ben Salem's first dog park um, that's going to be constructed there pretty soon, as well as a cafe, grooming services, those sorts of things. We can go to the next. So um, the part that everybody's interested in is our kittens. So we were crunching the numbers a little bit, um, and, and Liz was asking us, I think we've adopted out, it has to be well over 1,000 cats since we've been um, formed as an organization in 2012. Um, these are cats, kittens, um, and we were also running the numbers on our surgeries, because I know that we're also interested in the feral cats and how many you know dogs and cats we sterilize. Just in 2020 alone, we've done um, just about a thousand cat spay and neuters, and that was during the pandemic when we were limited in our services. And of those, 350 cats were feral cats that got ear tips and re safely returned to their community after they were vaccinated and uh, got their spay and neuter surgery. We can go to the next. This is our new town location for the Bridge Clinic, one of our full service uh, locations. Uh, we can go to the next. And so Core Creek Park, as uh, Commissioner Marsegula was uh, touching on, um, was one of our major projects that we've done and are still doing. So essentially in 2016, um, really with a, a lot of driving effort from uh, Commissioner Marsegula and some community partners, actually some national partners came in, um, 500 cats, probably over 500 cats, were taken out of the park. Um, I don't know if anyone remembers kind of the, the growing public health issue that these cats uh, and the dumping of these cats was creating. 
So essentially, we were able to get them all out of the park, adopt out over 200, uh, spay and neuter everyone, and um, return uh, a good number of these cats to the park, where we still to this day have feeders 24 hours a day, I'm um, sorry, uh, seven days a week, um, 365 days a year that are feeding these cats, that are monitoring the shelters that we have set up, and also um, are making sure that there are no new cats dumped uh, there, so they are really closely monitoring. They even have trail cameras uh, set up there. Um, we can go to the next slide. Um, and really quickly, uh, just to touch on the veterinary side of things, of you know what we're trying to uh, give back to the community with, we have a savings for seniors program uh, that we really want to highlight as well. Um, so this is a uh, through a grant with PetSmart Charities and through matching funds from the Bucks County SPCA. So we're offering $500 toward a life-changing procedure for seniors that live in Bucks County and are 55 uh, years and older. Um, so we can serve up to 20 different animals with this, uh, with this program. So if anyone is interested, uh, please refer, because I know this is really a tough time for seniors. Uh, and next. And that's it. Any questions? We are setting ourselves up as a community or institution, so if you have any need at all, please give us a call. We're here to help. Well, of course, we want the camera to make sure they get those cats in. They are so cute. I'm wondering if we can get them adopted before the meeting is over today. <laughs> Don, there you go. Our website has our application on it, rescueperfect.org. So. Right, and, and I would say, you know, it was great to work with you with Core Creek. I know we had our inmates actually build the cat houses that are there now, and we contain them in one area. I would say to anyone who's listening, if, if you are thinking about dropping a cat off, do not drop one off in Core Creek or anywhere. Please call the Bridge Clinic, call the SBCA, call me. We will find something to do with a cat. Don't abandon them. It's, it's a terrible, brutal thing to do. Uh, we're, we're so glad to be able to work with you. Gene, did you want to? Yeah, real cool, quick. I, their facility in, in Ben Salem is right around the corner from where I live, so I'm very familiar with the good work that you do. And uh, I've attended some of their fundraisers in the past, so yeah, thank you for all the good work. Just, just remind everyone about abandoning an animal like a cat or a dog. Isn't there laws in the state of Pennsylvania? and they, some of the local municipalities that it is against the law to abandon animals. Yeah, so essentially, um, you know, folks, we actually get calls like this all the time. Well, you know, I'll just let them out and they'll go and live in the park. They'll be happy out there. You know, that is considered abandonment. When you take on an animal, um, you're responsible for their care. Um, so to then, you know, deny them that care, putting them out in the park, uh, or putting them out, just letting them out, you know, in your apartment complex, that is, um, you know, that you can be fined. I think there might even be um, something greater than that. And it's actually a criminal offense? Yeah, it is a criminal offense. Okay, thank you. Yeah. No, th and thank you. And there have been some news stories uh, just recently about people who, because of the pandemic and being quarantined, they've started adopting cats, adopting, you know, buying dogs, buying cats, and, you know, and now maybe as they're going back to work, they're starting to think, well, I don't really know if I want this animal anymore. So uh, services like what you provide is really critical, especially now when people might have that thought in their mind. You know, there are, there are you know, places where those animals can be sent where they're going to be taken care of. And so thank you for that. Picture with the cats and everything, and so I'll just. Little Bunny is here, so <laughs> she wants to be in the picture too. <laughs> okay.
I'd like to do is introduce Eric Nagy, our Director of Policy and Projects, to talk a little bit about our Civic Plus website launch. I believe we have a video for that. And thank you, Eric. Good morning. So it is launch day. Uh, it has been a long time coming, but we have a new website for the County of Bucks. Uh, next. So this was a top transition priority when uh, the new administration took over in 2020. Uh, our transition team, I would say the number one thing they recommended was you got to replace that website because at the time it was 15 years old. Uh, today we sit here at 16 years old. Uh, some of the problems, the content was extremely dated. Um, people who did not work here any longer, uh, things that were no longer relevant. Um, there was no ADA accessibility. It was a difficult navigation experience for the users, and you could not search anything on the site and have what you were intending to search for come up. I always use the dog license example. Um, if you didn't know to get the dog license from the treasurer, you were out of luck. Uh, next. Uh, then we were uh, faced with COVID challenges, and um, the website became a really critical asset at that point because we were looking to minimize in-person interactions uh, we wanted to expand online transactions um, and uh, being able to fill out forms. And part of that was live streaming public meetings. Luckily, we were able to do that earlier. Uh, but the good news is with our new website, we'll be, those live streams will be able to live uh, within our website. And uh, I mentioned, but you know, we, we, have a, we lack digital paper forms. In other words, you have to get the PDF, print it out, send it in, um, and that's no way to function in the 21st century. Next. Um, so this task was a true team effort. Um, we started with a small website task force where we met regularly at the Planning Commission. Um, we all eventually decided to uh, uh, contract with Civic Plus, which is a large company out of Kansas who had does thousands of these sites for municipal organizations, uh, whether that's uh, township, boroughs, uh, states, um, counties, and they do a great job. And this involved every county department. There wasn't a single department that was not involved in this process, whether it was uh, getting their content migrated or understanding how people are using their uh, site, surveys, data, and mapping. Basically, we went through and we said, what are the most common interactions uh, for uh, the public? when they're coming to Bucks, County, uh, Bucks County's website. And uh, I, I should add that this project was led uh, by, by a handful of folks, but I do want to give special recognition to John Regula, our CIO, who from day one when he started just took this project and ran with it and has been just an incredible leader on this. So John, I think, thank you very much. Uh, and to, to Julie Kelchner as well, who is our webmaster and has worked diligently across every department to bring our content uh, uh, to get it updated and to uh, make sense of it, which is uh, no, no easy task. Um, and then all the folks involved in IT and our, and our friends and partners at Civic Plus, this was a true team effort. And thank you to the commissioners and to our COO, Margie, uh, for, for really supporting this project from its inception. Next. So, uh, we're going to do a little series of in, out with the old and in with the new. First of all, out with the old, we are no longer buckscounty.org. Next. We are now buckscounty.gov. Uh, that comes with it several layers of security and also a user experience that says, I'm at an official government website. I know that. Uh, it feels that way. Um, and, it, and it's just uh, becoming a, a more industry standard across the country um, so that people know who they're interacting with. Next. Branding. Out with the old. This is our county seal. I'm not saying we're getting rid of our seal. I'm just saying we are getting rid of it as our digital uh, pr presence branding. So uh, its, its coloring was dated. It did not match with um, universal design standards. Uh, so. Our, our new design. Uh, our new logo is obviously a, a fresher interpretation of, of, of the old, um, keeping some of the color scheme, um, and, but incorporating more of what Bucks County is today. 
yes, we are bucolic, and yes, we have covered bridges, but we also have towns, and we also have businesses, and we also have main streets. So I think this better reflects Bucks County uh, as opposed to the one that was 300 years old. So next. So, and now the big part, design. Out with the old. Uh, as you can see, um, very green, uh, very yellow. Um, a lot of what you see on this is text over images. In other words, it's not searchable. Um, there's no rhyme or reason to how much of this is set up. Even the grid pattern we did below is a very recent development. There actually hadn't been a template redesign for eight years. So uh, the website itself hadn't been updated, hadn't been changed in 15 years, but the, the, any of the design elements within the homepage uh, hadn't been touched in eight years. And in tech terms, that's, that might as well be 100 years. Uh, next, in with the new. Here is our brand new homepage for buckscounty.gov. Um, when you come to it, you're welcomed by an awesome vista of Bristol and the riverfront. You'll see along the bottom, uh, along the middle, there are buttons with our most common interactions. Along the top, our menus make sense. Um, next. But we have not forgotten our, our, where we came from. So we kept our seal. We just took away the green and the yellow. Uh, that is the footer of our page um, so that people know that, again, this is an official government entity. This is our official seal. Next. So in the middle of the page, we have our most common interactions or the places that we want to drive traffic toward. Um, our agendas and minutes for our commissioner meetings. Uh, careers. These are job openings at the county. Um, any, we, we just hired a new director of parks and recreation a new digital media specialist, and there are jobs like that in all points between, all the way down to lifeguards at the pools. Uh, so please check there regularly if you're looking for work. Uh, all our maps and data through our GIS portal. Our brand new human services hub, we are really excited about, but contains a lot of the core functions of what we do here at the county. Of course, we have a COVID-19 button, but we are hopeful that that will become less and less relevant in the coming months. Um, and a way to stay connected with us and updates. Next. New menus along the top. We wanted to envision this as who, who is coming to visit us. So there are many ways to access the same information, whether you are here for searching through government departments or courts, or, or we looked at it this way. There are going to be three types of people here. Those folks who are living in Bucks County, folks who are working in Bucks County, and folks who are visiting Bucks County. So throughout those various drop-down menus, you'll find the information that you're going to look for in a, in a organized in a way that makes sense to that user. Uh, and on the right, we have a how do I, dot, dot, dot. And how do I is, how do I apply for X? How do I find X? How do I sign up for? Um, and this is just one of the many ways that we have for you to get to where you need to be. We have a search icon. We have uh, this how do I. We have, uh, which I will show later, a chat bot feature. Basically, we're figuring out as many ways as possible to get you to where you want to be, however you feel comfortable getting there. Next. So we have new headers. Some of our departments have uh, their own websites with their own button array. Courts is one of those. Um, the district attorney is another. Our hub will be another. Parks and Rec is another. Um, and elections will be one uh, shortly. But this is what those will look like. They all have their own chatbot features. They all have their own most visited features and obviously their own menu setup. Next. So this is probably the coolest feature of the new website. One of the biggest complaints we got about the old one was I can't f search for what I'm looking for. I always use the dog license example. So next. Our artificial intelligence chatbot, how do I get a dog license? If you ask the chatbot any variation of that question or any question you're looking to find, whether that's a marriage license, a dog license, how do I pay my property taxes, et cetera, you will get that answer. Um, I don't know that anyone can see that <laughs> on the screen, but the, when you ask how do I get a dog license, it will say, here's where you go to do that. And it'll bring up this page when you click on it, next. 
get you right to our treasurer's page. You see Chris's picture there and the, the various buttons of how you get that dog license. Obviously, it's a minor example I'm using, but one that's pertinent because it's not something we were able to do uh, two days ago. Next. Also important, our previous site did not have ADA accessibility, which is, which is just a, a major disservice to the people in the community. Uh, everybody has the right to access information put out by their government. We have what we call audio eye. That's that little icon in the bottom left. When you click on that, next, this menu will pop up on the right side uh, and you will be able to interact uh, with the website however you need to access it. It will give you the options you need to get through and get the information that you need regardless of ability. Next. Scrolling down the page further, we have news and events which will be updated frequently. Just the fact that we have a calendar that shows you what's going on is uh, sort of a monumental advancement over our, our last page. And obviously our news section will be updated regularly. Um, next. It's 2021, everyone, you have to meet people where they are. Uh, most people are on their phones when they're accessing websites. Our previous website was not necessarily very mobile friendly. This has everything you need contained on your cell phone. You'll be able to access our site. Uh, and down the road, we will actually be building an app specifically uh, for our site. Next. So our next challenge is driving traffic to the site. We want people to use the site. We want people of Bucks County to be able to go to buckscounty.gov uh, so that it starts to populate in our search engines. Uh, so that the first result is buckscounty.gov, and we'll be working really hard to make sure that happens. But one of the public relations moves we will be doing to get to that point is, an, is a video put together by our commissioners introducing our new site. Randy. Hi, I'm Commissioner Diane ellis Marseglia. I'm Commissioner Gene DiGeronimo. I'm Commissioner Bob Harvey. It's no secret that the county's website is severely out of date, and it has been for a while. And frankly, Bucks County, you deserve better, because if we have learned anything this last year and a half, it's that access to information is paramount. And our 15-year-old website just doesn't cut it. That's why the commissioners agreed together to agree together. Agreed together to invest in a brand new, drastically improved website intended to make your access to the county government more transparent, quicker, and easier than it's ever been. Gone are the days of scrolling through an endless maze of beige, green, and gold. When you log on to the new site, you'll be welcomed by a modern design that's also mobile-friendly and a brand new logo that we feel represents the diverse county that we all call home. But the updates aren't just superficial. The site now boasts ADA features as well because your government should be accessible to all county residents regardless of ability. We've also replaced our old search function an easy-to-use interactive chat box. Simply type your question and we'll get you the services you need. It's perhaps most important to note that our web address is changing. BucksCounty.org is now BucksCounty.gov. The old address will still point you to the new website for the foreseeable future, but the .org will eventually go away. This change makes our website more secure and less confusing to visitors who will have no doubt that they're on the official government website. We plan to add more features down the road that will enhance and streamline the way you interact with your county government. Like a mobile app, user profiles, easier online payments, and digital forms. In the meantime, whether you're living, working, or visiting Bucks County, we invite you to visit the new buckscounty.gov. Have a look around and let us know what you think. Next. So as the commissioners said on the video, we're not done. This is a work in progress. We do want your feedback. Uh, we need your feedback, frankly. We need to know what, we, what we're missing. I'm sure we'll learn a lot of that in the next few weeks. Uh, already this morning, uh, we had to make some changes, but that's to be expected. But um, this is a monumental leap forward. We're really excited to be able to give this to the public uh, as a tool to interact with their government. Um, coming soon. There will be a mobile app uh, for iOS and Android that will be just like, so for example, if you, 
do online banking, your banking app, and your, if you're on your, on, the, on your desktop computer, you will have a similar experience through a single sign-on, what we're going to call the Bucks County ID, so that you can track all of your interactions with us and that we can uh, respond to you better. There will be online payments and forms coming. New department headers, I'm sure that we will find that uh, other departments will need a little more attention than some. Um, and we will be frequently updating content on this site. We're not just going to let it sit there. We are constantly going to be working to make it better. And uh, one thing coming down the road is Civic Clerk, which will be an agenda management system. So our commissioner meetings that we're on today, when you go to our website, you'll be able to see in real time the agenda items that we're on um, and, and, and watch the video as it's happening. So next, I think that's it. Yeah. There are any questions? I just think it looks great, and I'm grateful for the dedication and the time you've put into this. It takes a while to build something like that, but it's great. It, thank you. Thanks, Eric. Thank you. And it, and it does take a while, and uh, we managed to get this done a lot quicker than you're supposed to. So uh, we had a great team behind us. And again, thank you for your support in this project. Appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you, Eric. You are now open for brief public comments on agenda items. Is there any public comment? Yes. Andy Warren, Middletown. Uh, <clears throat> Quickly, I have a couple comments that I'll save till the end concerning the website. Some very positive, some just for consideration of a contradiction. At any rate, I'll save that till the end. I was intrigued by the uh, cat proclamation, particularly intrigued by the one slide that showed two cats sitting. They were, must have been very well trained because right on their shoulder was a blue jay <laughs> who must have been very brave. Either way, it was uh, eye-catching. Um, to the con questions about the agenda, <clears throat> the first question was would be for 2D. Um, the question is $4.3 million for how long and what does that do? It just says to completion. The next question was 7A and B, um, $100,000 um, for COVID-19 partitions, which we're going to have 4th of July celebrations saying that we're independent of COVID from the White House. Um, and as was stated earlier by a previous, uh, previous gentleman, um, hopefully we will be re less reliant on COVID. I just wonder why we're spending that money for next year if COVID's on the way out. And finally, just as an a, 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 a update, 12A, um, that $430 an hour, that's not that's not just our cost, right? That's okay. That's split the three ways. Okay, thank you very much. When we get to those comments, I'll be interested in hearing. Um, answer those questions briefly. I don't know if anybody wants to add anything, but on 2D, this is the full retrofitting of what was the Women's Community Correction Center into a forensic center for people who are struggling with mental illness and have come in contact with the police. This will stop us from having to put people with mental illness in the jail. Anybody want to add anything to that? Or um, the Malvern Glass one, the 12A. I mean, that. Do you want to talk about that? About why we're continuing to do that? Or general services? I can speak to that, Commissioners. Okay. Um, 7A as well as um, 7E. Uh, the Malvern Glass. Those are essentially reception counter. Areas we had put temporary measures in place, um, such as a barrier between you know, visitors and, and the staff. In some of our locations, we have permanent glass barriers. You know, we're actually now taking those temporary ones out and putting in a permanent, you know, glass barrier, which 
uh, will not only be a benefit just during a pandemic type situation, but it's just a, a creates a more permanent barrier between the uh, just visiting public from a security safety uh, of, of the staff that are behind the glass, um, helping to, you know, kind of the, um, improve that interaction. I know in some of the some of the offices there are it's kind of a wide open counter. I'll use clerk of courts as an example. Uh, this will help kind of better define where the transactions you know, are better easier taking place rather than just all over that counter. Uh, so that's that's the reason uh, behind Malvern Glass uh, corporate facilities. This is also um, this is more related to the workstations and furniture and staff. So we initially um, with the concept of kind of an open floor plan with workspace, we had much lower partition walls. With COVID, um, some of those became a challenge. We installed some temporary partitions um, to kind of separate you know, barriers between some of the staff. Um, we wanted to still keep that you know, open office, interactive work environment. So th these are actually kind of a glass partition that will go on top of the partition wall. So you'll still have that open look, open feel, but it'll be something that'll be permanent. We've done it in some of our offices. Uh, still provides that open, interactive office work environment. But down the road, it prevents us from uh, just in general, um, not just with COVID, but uh, maybe people will benefit from COVID, but just normal um, colds, flus, things like that, where you know, but there's the potential for someone to cough or sneeze or you know, those particles could, you know, go over a partition wall. Uh, so this will help improve just in general health, safety, welfare of the, yeah. the county staff. And on the monetary side. Sure. Um, yeah, I think it's actually... Um, Thank you, uh, Commissioner Warren, uh, for the question. It's actually not um, a fee that's being split three ways. It's actually um, a, a fee that will be split um, probably 40 or 50 ways. Um, and so uh, what you're seeing with the number three is 3% 3 of the cost or less. Um, on our agendas, when we have two asterisks, that means that's the, the, the highest that a rate would be. So for legal fees, um, when you see 430 an hour, that's the highest rate that a partner at that firm would charge. There are other attorneys who actually charge much less than that, and paralegals who charge less than that. Um, and, and this is a good example of, in the current administration, the county, I think, being much smarter about handling cases where other municipalities are dealing with the same exact issues. And instead of all of us tasking various solicitors or law firms to basically recreate the same work, uh, if, we, if we sort of team up together, um, we can bring, um, bring the fees down for all the taxpayers significantly. Um, so I think it's a, it's a credit to the pathonotary for, for having the uh, initiative to, um, to, to propose this to the commissioners to make um, um, what is a necessary evil, which is dealing with, with lawsuits that come up, um, much more affordable. Thank you. Is there a motion to support or to approve the um, minutes of the June 2nd, 2021 meeting and items 1 through 17 on today's agenda? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, moving to the regular agenda. The first item on the agenda is for, under the commissioners, approving a resolution in support of maintaining the entirety of the County of Bucks in a single congressional district. Anybody, before we move on, want to make any comments? Uh, yeah, uh, thank you. Uh, it, this is a really important issue. And uh, it, it's coming up now because the legislature in Harrisburg is starting to think about and talk about reapportionment, with, which they do every 10 years when they draw, redraw the lines for not only the state house and senate districts, but also the congressional districts around the state of Pennsylvania. And uh, as the resolution states in its body, Bucks County has been a single congressional district for 170 years. Uh, I think that's important to everyone that lives in Bucks County. Uh, I, I, there's some chatter going on in Harrisburg and uh, I know our present Congressman, uh, Brian Fitzpatrick, has heard, heard the chatter up in Harrisburg about possibly breaking Buck County up into two separate congressional districts. And that is something that I do not think anybody in Bucks County want to see happen. 
whether you're Democrat, Republican, Independent, or whatever party you belong to. I think it's important to keep Bucks County Hall one congressional district. Now, there is a small part of the congressional district that's in Montgomery County, a very small part, but the, but the whole county is almost all of the congressional district. I know our congressman, Brian Fitzpatrick, wants to keep it like that. And again, I think it's important to everybody that lives in Bucks County uh, that, that, that that happens, that we stay like that. So we're making a statement here to three, to three commissioners that we want to see it stay one congressional district. Uh, we are going to forward, once we pass the resolution, we're going to forward that to our state House and Senate delegation to make sure that they understand that we're supportive of keeping it like this. And I also think it's important that possibly that we get it forwarded also to the leadership in the House and the Senate, Democrat and Republican as well, when they're negotiating. And I, I've been up there for 25 years and I see how some of these negotiations go and you know what goes on in the background. So I think it's important that we let it know that we want to keep Bucks County Hall. We're not interested in splitting it up and dividing it up and going in whatever direction uh, it might go in. We want Bucks County to stay one congressional district. An important resolution. I'm glad that we're going to vote on this today. Thank you for bringing it to our attention, too, Commissioner Hart. I, I agree with uh, Commissioner DiGiralmo. I think we all do. Uh, that, you know, we want to keep Bucks County intact. Uh, we know that there are other uh, counties uh, that are chopped up into pieces and it would make certainly uh, the job of elected officials like ourselves more difficult and, and more complicated even for the voters not knowing you know, who their congressperson is. Um, we're very fortunate, I think. We want to make sure we keep it that way. I'm going to move on to corrections. There are a number of, of <clears throat> items here on the agenda and then we will ask our director of corrections to come up and answer any questions. The first three are with the Bucks County Drug and Alcohol Commission and they are to approve contract for the pretrial program at $105,025, to approve a contract for the HEART program at $80,000, and to approve a contract to provide services for the Vivitrol medication assisted program at $79,000. There's a contract with CMG of Easton, and that's to approve the uh, approval of an increase in the general construction cost for the Women's Correctional Facility Expansion Project in the amount of $43,054.61. A contract with Emily McKinney. To, this contract is to provide drug and alcohol intervention services to inmates in the amount of $45,500. There are one, two, three, two contracts with the Pennsylvania Commission on Crime and Delinquency. One, to approve the extension of the general government operations grant, and the second, to approve an extension of the residential substance abuse and treatment program grant. There is a contract um, with Prime Care Medical, and this is an extension to provide and administer the Vivitrol as part of the medication-assisted treatment. Westcott Electric Company to improve an increase to the electrical contract to install new light fixtures for the Women's Correctional Facility Expansion Project in the amount of 36928 and a contract with Westcott Electric Company approving an increase to the electrical contract for additional wireless access points for the Women's Correctional Facility Expansion Project in the amount of $40,428.30. So I would ask our director of corrections, Chris Paroli. There you are. Do you do you mind coming down and see? If we just had a couple questions, Commissioner Harvey. Did you? Thank you, Mr. Paroli. Uh, just for you know, for people who obviously. Um, you know, the vast majority of Bucks Countyans don't have, uh, you know, any kind of experiences uh, with our correctional facilities. So in terms of, especially the, the first three things we have here with the, the pretrial program, the heart program, uh, and MAT, just give us an idea for the average person, what's, what's the benefit of those and what exactly are those programs? So for uh, 19A, that's for our two employees for the uh, uh, drug court, I'm sorry, pretrial uh, program. Drug court. Uh, it's uh, Wolburn and uh, Donchez who have been at the facility. 
Um, the other one B, 19B, is our heart program. That's the female uh, mat program that we've been running in the facility with a lot of success. And the uh, 19C is the Vivitrol program uh, that we are, are extending all those programs. Right. And what kind of success in terms of, you know, all the, a lot of the, you certainly put people in a correctional facility. Um, it's, it's, it's not just about punishment. You're trying to get some kind of rehabilitation so they don't come back, <laughs> you know. Sure. Um, and people may be in the correctional facility, not just ours, but across the country, uh, could be in prison for a variety of reasons, but uh, drugs and alcohol tend to be a common denominator uh, for a lot of those people, even if they're not in because of a specific charge regarding drugs or alcohol, there's usually some kind of contributing factor. Um, what kind of success have we seen in the past couple of years with, with programs like these and others? So we, we are tracking our graduates and seeing what their rate of return is to our facility, um, and that's ongoing. But uh, I, I think the biggest um, success is when you have inmates who have been going through programs for years. And when they finally get to the HEART program or get to the HOPE program for the males, um, they have nothing but good things to say about it um, and how happy they are that we actually offer that in the county now because it's a program unlike anything that they've experienced. It gives them an opportunity to kind of turn their lives around, gives them the tools that they need out in the community, um, and I think that's extremely beneficial. So it's definitely a program worthwhile supporting. Thank you. Appreciate that. We're going to vote on this, but could you stay there for just one second? Um, if the commissioners will ha have any other questions, call for a vote on numbers 18 and 19 of the reg and that's A through J. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, there we go. Pass that. So, Chris, we were, um, this is your last meeting before you retire. So. <laughs> <laughs> he looks happy about that. <laughs> I don't know how I feel about that. <laughs> it's been a great to work with you all of this time. You know, I'm excited for you to leave, but I'm sorry for us to have lost you. But I think I would like to read this proclamation because I think it's important for everybody here in the public to know the dedication that you have made to the county. So, whereas Chris Paroli is retiring after 39 years of loyal service in Bucks County, that was 39 years, Department of Corrections, the last four as Director of Corrections. And whereas Mr. Proley's journey to the top began where many fine experiences do, in the kitchen, as he was hired by the County of Bucks on September 30th, 1982, to be a cook for the old county prison in Doylestown. Not only was he chef for the Gothic-style jail, once dubbed the Pine Street Hotel, he is the only person still in the employ of the Corrections Department to have worked there. Whereas meals served and mass were certainly familiar to Mr. Paroli, a father of seven who grew up in Tullytown as one of 15 children, born to a longtime borough council and school board member and his businesswoman wife. Not surprisingly, a 2003 article in the Philadelphia Inquirer began with the line, Hyannisport has the Kennedys, Tullytown has the Parolis. <laughs> Right. <laughs> Whereas Mr. Paroli steadily advanced through the Corrections Department ranks, earning promotions to dietary supervisor in 1989, lieutenant in 2003, deputy director of facility operations in 2006, and, de and director of corrections in 2017. And whereas, in cooperation with other county leaders, Mr. Proley helped bring mental health issues to the forefront in dealing with inmates and worked to help transfer responsibility for prisoners' medical treatment from the county health department to prime care, a third-party provider. And whereas a number of innovations implemented during Mr. Proley's leadership helped to further shift the focus of incarceration from punishment to rehabilitation. These include the medication-assisted treatment program, the inside-out prison exchange program, the Hope and Heart Recovery Program, which received a Criminal Justice Best Practices Award in 2019 from the County Commissioners Association of Pennsylvania. And whereas Mr. Paroli helped oversee the ongoing expansion of the Women's Correctional Facility, scheduled to open later this year, which will, which will help ease overcrowding and end the costly need to house county prisoner facilities outside of Bucks County. And whereas during the COVID-19 pandemic, Mr. Paroli worked responsibly with the courts, the district attorney, and other stakeholders to reduce the county prison population in a manner that protected 
both the public health and the prison's health. Now, therefore, do we, the Bucks County Board of Commissioners, hereby commend Chris Poroli for his decades of leadership, professionalism, and dedication on behalf of Bucks County, its prison system, and the people that it serves. We congratulate him on his well-deserved retirement and wish him good health and happiness in the next chapter of his life and invite the Assistant Director of Corrections to come up and share a couple words about Mr. Paroli as well. I'm not retired yet, so <laughs> be, be careful. You can still fire me. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, so uh, sad day for everybody here in Corrections, but we are very happy uh, that, that Chris has uh, achieved a milestone. We wished it would have been 40 years. Um, 39 is good enough. Um, so everybody think back for a minute, 1982, where were you, right? We've all been to different places. Some of you probably weren't even born at that point or, or were in elementary school, right? Thank you. So, yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> uh, uh, talk to, uh, you know, going over some stuff that we've done and, and some of the stuff that was brought up in the proclamation. The um, treatment that we've instituted under Chris's direction has been incredible. Um, I, I think Bucks County is one of the most progressive corrections departments out there, and, and everybody in this room has a piece of that. All the departments, the commissioners, chief operating officers, solicitors. Um, I was thinking back to the yoga when we started doing pre-COVID. Remember that? We had uh, Chris demonstrate some yoga moves up here uh, at the commissioner's <laughs> meeting, so that was good. Um, I'd like to thank Chris for his leadership. Um, I know working next to him, uh, side by side with him, I really picked up a lot. Um, I really learned to look at everybody uh, on staff in a leadership management role and, and kind of find uh, people's talents. Chris had a good knack for that, uh, finding somebody that had a specific talent and pulling that out. So we're all grateful for that. Um, last two things I have, I'm going to miss our late nights working. Uh, Chris would often be in his office blasting uh, his rock and roll tunes, some of the 1970s Eric Clapton stuff, and then he'd switch over to rap around 7 o'clock at night. So that would throw me for a loop, but that would uh, get his energy up and running when we were plowing through all the paperwork and, and the long nights we had during the year of COVID. So I'd like to thank him for that. And last but not least, uh, I talked to the guys, and if you want a cat, can arrange an adoption <laughs> for you today. Two. You want two? Yeah, Pick my, two I got, out. I got a couple dogs. We're so. going to cover the fees. So. Yeah, yeah. so again, thank you. Congratulations. Thanks, Dave. Thanks. Thanks. have two budget adjustments today, budget adjustment number 13 with do in domestic relations in the amount of $15,000, and budget adjustment for the workforce and economic development number 14 for $321,300. Anything we need to know, Mr. Pascola? Um, just that uh, number 14 refers to the item 16B that the commissioners just approve on the agenda. It's uh, unbudgeted revenue. Um, neither uh, adjustment has any impact on the general fund. Terrific. Is there a motion to approve the budget adjustment? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Is there a motion to approve the personnel actions for today? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And are there any other civics for today? Uh, yeah, Madam Chair, um, we've contacted, the three of us actually contacted by the Hay Haycock Historical Society. Uh, they're doing uh, some work looking for some national recognition, uh, and uh, it's my pleasure to uh, uh, ask to motion for a contribution of $2,000 to the Haycock Historical Society. Second. And I'd like to, and we will ask them if they want to say anything at the end of the meeting. We have public comment because I see there is someone here. Um, and I would make a motion for a $2,000 donation to the Bridge Animal Clinic. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Our Chief Operating Officer's report. Thank you, Commissioner. Um, first, Chris, most of the good people that work for Bucks County started in the kitchen. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for your service. 
It has been great to get to know you over um, pretty difficult times during COVID, but I've appreciated your guidance, your friendship, and your loyalty to the county, so thank you. Um, a couple things I just wanted to talk about today. Uh, COVID, so um, as, as we've been talking about, the clinics are gonna die down and uh, close in um, the community college locations, stay open in Neshaminy and Warwick uh, starting the first two full weeks in July from 10 to four um, between July 6th and 9th and 10 to four um, in the Warwick site from the 12th to the 16th. Uh, one thing I wanted to make mention, so 272,000 folks in Bucks County are fully vaccinated. 73,700 are partially vaccinated. There is more than half that have of those 73,700 that have not come back for their second shot. So if I implore you um, to come back for your second shot, uh, it can be beyond the 21 to 28 day time frame. Um, we hope that we will see you back at the clinics. Um, if you have any questions, call our health department. Uh, to, to talk about any reservations you might have about coming back. Uh, as I said, and Dr. Damsker is here, I think, in the back somewhere, or he was here. Um, no, he's not back there now. Um, but if you have any questions, please call the, the health department. He'd be happy to help. And then last, I wanted to tell everyone that we had our human services roundtable last week, and, and I wanted to thank the staff of human services, Rachel, um, Neff, um, let's see who else was, was at the meeting. Shannon Kirby and Amy Croson, they organized the meeting. We had about 60 plus nonprofit providers from our social services partners in the county attend. The common themes, themes were need for housing, transportation accessibility, uh, premium pay for the staff that work at the, the nonprofit uh, organizations, um, child care, need for child care, employment, whether it be finding folks to work in, in, in our um, businesses or nonprofits, um, but also training them, upskilling them, and then also senior center support because they were closed for so long, were not unable to have their fundraising events and they still need to keep their doors open um, to help support our seniors. So those were some of the common themes that we learned. We've taken that information back and we're gonna host a session with our economic development uh, partners through the commissioner's um, COVID response efforts and have the same type of session with them. And with that information, we're gonna develop a budget. The commissioner's gonna make some decisions about how the American Rescue Act funds will be um, distributed and um, used in the future. And we're looking forward to making sure that that gets out to the folks that need it the most, not only in our social services agencies, but also out in our business and economic communities. And that that's, concludes my report. Questions for the Chief Operating Officer? No, okay. good. Take our solicitor's report. Thank you, Commissioner. Um, so I'll just begin by um, reporting uh, out on our executive session yesterday. Um, with the most folks who follow these meetings are aware, the commissioners regularly meet in executive session the day before public meetings. Um, with our new website um, going up uh, as a better practice, we're actually just kind of listing that among the items that appear on our website. Um, I'm also happy to report uh, on an item that we first um, brought up during Earth Week um, when we had shared that um, uh, a federal judge uh, here in the Eastern District of Pennsylvania had granted a motion uh, from Bucks County to intervene in a federal lawsuit um, that was, um, in, from our standpoint, um, our effort was to help protect the ban on fracking in the Delaware Valley um, River Basin, excuse me, Delaware River Basin. Um, the, this area that includes Bucks County uh, spans four states and is protected by the Delaware River Basin Commission. Um, which had instituted a rule against um, fracking in that region because of the very serious environmental harms that this practice poses to our water supply. Um, Pennsylvania is one of the only states in the country that has an environmental rights amendment in, in our constitution, um, which not only guarantees the right um, for all Pennsylvanians to have clean or pure water, um, but it also requires municipalities like county governments to act as trustees to protect our natural resources. Um, Bucks County takes that responsibility uh, very seriously and um, 
when Commissioner Harvey had learned that um, a, a couple of state senators from other parts of the state, along with other municipalities, um, had brought a lawsuit to overturn that ban on fracking, uh, he had tasked the law department to determine the best way to help. So we were very proud to, to join a, a Senate delegation led by Senator Steve Sanicero, along with our allies, um, including Montgomery County, to intervene to help defend against this lawsuit um, with the help of our uh, trusted outside counsel at Hangley Aronchak and with the assistance um, of um, uh, folks in the administration, um, our chief operating our, uh, officer, Margie McKevitt, and Evan Stone, the director of our um, planning commission. So I'm happy to share that last Friday afternoon, um, Judge Diamond had gra uh, granted the motion to dismiss, which is a very hard standard um, in court to meet. Um, but we met that because the judge had found that really the, the senators that have brought this suit uh, had no business filing it in the first place. And um, the judge's opinion, which is available on our new website at buckscounty.gov, um, framed this really as a partisan political dispute um, and not a plausible legal claim that belonged in a court of law. So I'd like to take this opportunity to really thank and applaud all of the commissioners, um, not only for their steadfast and tireless commitment to the environment, uh, but also for their bold leadership on this issue. Uh, Montgomery County was the only other county in Pennsylvania to join us in this effort, and um, I think we're very proud that Bucks continues to have a leading voice uh, on legal, legal issues like this, and we really look forward to uh, continuing to build a law department uh, that is ever more bold and dynamic and um, proactive in championing the values of this administration. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, as we move to commissioner comments, I just want to not make any comments, but rather ask our Director of Mental Health and Beha Behavioral Programs to come up and correct my answer on the GEO contract that was on our consent agenda. Just to, to read it, it's approving a license and professional services agreement. Appreciate your clarifying that. Thank you, Commissioner. I just wanted to respond to Mr. Um, Warren, the commissioner had said that what was on the agenda um, covered the full cost of the facility. Um, so the commissioner was correct in that the facility is being built um, to divert individuals uh, from the correctional facility. But what's actually on agenda uh, for this four plus million dollars uh, is to cover the consultation for the planning and design of the building, also to um, provide consultation on the construction of the building, and then um, to also provide the startup services. Services will be ongoing, so Mr. Warren had also asked about the term of this particular um, contract, and it is expected that design and then construction, which will not be done by this provider, um, that the facility will be ready uh, to be occupied either um, late 2022 or early 2023. So the startup services are expected, you know, to go for that term, but the facility itself and ongoing services will obviously be ongoing. So I just wanted to provide that clarity. Thank you. Okay. Commissioner DiGiorno, any comments today? Uh, maybe just real quick, couple. Uh, uh, as uh, Chairman of the Prison Board, uh, I just want to reach out and say to Chris, thank you. Um, I don't think there is anybody that would argue that you have the toughest job in county government. The individuals that come into your care, and I think care is a good word to use, a lot of times are just in a terrible situation at the worst time of their life with addictions, with mental health issues, with all kind of family problems. And you've got the toughest job in county government. And you have just done, and I know the 39 years, but in, in your years as director, you have just done an extraordinary job especially over the last year and a half with the COVID pandemic. Uh, I, I sometimes wonder how you and your staff at the prison do what you do under an enormous amount of challenges and difficulties. And uh, 
again, I don't know, maybe we use this word bittersweet too much, but you know, we certainly, everyone is gonna miss you um, and your leadership, and I heard that word used a couple of, a couple of times today under your, le your leadership, but we're, I see the smile on your face, so I know uh, after 39 years that maybe you have other things you wanna do with your life, so we wish you all the best, but, but thank you. Thank you for your leadership and the good work that you've done uh, taking care of vulnerable, our most vulnerable people who are at, who are at some of the worst times of their lives and, and you get them, so thank you. Uh, one other, real quick. Uh, I'm watching and I'm watching what's going on up in Harrisburg uh, with this election reform and, it, and it's making the headlines on the front of all the papers right now. And uh, a, a, a bill just came out of the state government committee yesterday and, it, and it's House Bill 1300 and the, uh, the prime sponsor is uh, Representative Seth Grove and I think he did a pretty good job of holding 10 hearings around the state uh, the last few months and he, uh, and he put a bill together. Uh, but the red flags it raises for me is that the voting committee was 15 to 10. And all 15 Republicans voted yes on the bill, and all 10 Democrats voted no on the bill. So, and I'm, I was looking at the comments back and forth, and there was, a, you know, a lot of dissension. And uh, so that tells me from my years of experience up there in Harrisburg that there's not an agreement and the two sides have not been talking. And I look at this and we're going to need, if we're gonna get something done. Now, Bucks County and the other counties and the County Commissioners Association have put up two top priorities and that one is for pre-canvassing, allow us time before the election to, to open the ballots and to scan them before election, and I think there's five days of pre-canvassing in that bill. I'd like to have a little bit more. I know CCAP has, has, uh, has asked for 15 days, but I think we'd be okay with five days. Uh, the other one was moving that date back for applications for mail-in ballots instead of a week before election to two weeks, and that's something that all the counties desperately need, and I think that's a good idea. And there's a lot of other stuff in there, but I, you know, when I see a vote coming out of committee of 15 to 10, where one side votes yes and the other side votes no, I know there's gonna be problems with things in that bill on going through the legislator, legislature, House and Senate, and, giving, and getting the governor to sign it into law. So I would hope that moving forward that the two sides will at some point in time start to negotiate. And I say this all the time, compromise is not a bad word when you're legislating, whether it's in Washington, Harrisburg, Doylestown, or municipalities. Compromise is not a bad word. And I am sure they're gonna need a compromise on this bill. And I hope they can find that compromise sometime before they leave at the end of June and I realize that's a tall order, but uh, they realize that we're counties, I mean, we're really struggling with what we have to work with, the laws that we're under right now. We're really, really struggling. Uh, they, they've done a terrific job, our Board of Election here in Bucks County, but we need some help and we need some relief, and the only way they're gonna pass a law in Harrisburg if the, they, the two sides start talking together and find a compromise on these issues, and I hope they can do it. Thank, thank you. you very much. Mr. Harvey? Yeah, thank you. Um, <clears throat> I want to thank um, Mr. Proley for all the work he's put in uh, over the past uh, almost 40 years. Uh, I won't tell you where I was in 1982. Uh, I'll leave that out. Uh, but uh, but certainly, you know, big shoes to fill. Uh, and but we really appreciate uh, everything you've you've done, especially again as as everybody said, you know. 
the last 15, 16 months have been incredibly difficult for everybody, uh, but for especially for those people who are responsible for running prisons uh, across the country, it's been incredibly difficult. So thank you for your leadership in that. Um, just uh, want to touch on a couple things uh, coming up. Um, for a lot of people, uh, what's known as Juneteenth uh, is a relatively new term and a new, uh, uh, you know, something they're not as familiar with. Um, and it is something that does go back to the Civil War. Uh, there's actually going to be a Juneteenth um, celebration in Lower Bucks County this weekend. Um, we think back to the Civil War, we have to remind ourselves that transportation, of course, was nothing like what we're used to today. Communication was nothing like what we're used to today. Um, and so when uh, the Emancipation Proclamation was signed by um, President Lincoln in 1862, it went into effect in January of 1863, it, it did not free the slaves with the stroke of a pen. Uh, what it specifically said was that people who were enslaved, who lived in states that were in rebellion against the United States of America, would be freed once the United States military freed them. Uh, so, in other words, you had to wait for the United States military to get to you uh, to become free. Obviously, this was not news that uh, people who were enslaved were aware of. Um, it was illegal to teach slaves to read and write uh, in, in states where slavery existed. Um, but eventually, they did start to hear about it. And then, as the United States military showed up, they recognized their freedom. And that took place over, you know, the, the remaining, you know, 20 six months or so, 27 months of the war. Um, the final place uh, where this happened uh, occurred in Galveston, Texas. Uh, Texas being sort of the most western part of the Confederacy, uh, the area in rebellion against the United States, uh, cut off uh, because of the different uh, battles that had happened. Uh, it took until June uh, 19th of 1865 for the United States military to get to Galveston and for the Emancipation Proclamation to be read, uh, and for the enslaved people of Texas to realize uh, that that freedom had arrived for them. Uh, interestingly, while it may be new for a lot of people, uh, this has been a holiday in Texas since 1979. Uh, so it is not new around the country. Uh, and so it's interesting, you know, in some cases we're still learning history. Um, you know, we know especially over the past, um, several years, couple decades, really. Uh, we know that uh, relations in this country, race relations specifically, have not gotten better. Um, we have reports from the FBI and other law enforcement, federal law enforcement, that you know, white supremacy and, and extremism are the biggest threats to the United States. Uh, and so no, and informing ourselves a little bit about the history and understanding a little bit about where, we, where we've been and how we got here is a major part uh, of moving forward uh, as Americans. So um, I want to encourage people to, you know, keep mindful of that. And, and uh, certainly we know that uh, the state has, uh, has uh, uh, declared um, uh, that day as a holiday for uh, court employees and state employees. Um, but, uh, and, you know, certainly a lot of states have it uh, as a holiday. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what happens in the future uh, if it becomes more, more pronounced and more sort of well-known. And finally, just want to wish everybody, uh, all the fathers and stepfathers and grandfathers, uh, this Sunday, Happy Father's Day. Uh, thank you for everything that you do, all the fathers who are in the room, uh, the fathers up here on the dais, uh, and all the grandfathers as well. Uh, thank you, and I uh, hope you have a very restful day and, and enjoy that tie you're going to get, uh, you know, or whatever, golf clubs or, or a fishing pole or whatever it is that you, that you get from, uh, from, your, from your kids and, and grandkids. So that's it. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's a good thing to remember. Are there any brief public comments on any item? Yes. Three quick comments, mostly all positive. <clears throat> I commend the board, the enlightened, for um, recognizing Mr. Foley. Congratulations. It was an enlightened board that recognized him. It was an enlightened board that hired him uh, <laughs> and 40 years ago. And then uh, Commissioner DiGirolamo mentioned being prepared, the toughest job. Growing up with 15 family and a fifth family of 15 brothers, 
that's in light, that is preparation. Um, having had experience with some of them, you are prepared. Um, <laughs> second, to officially, I mean not officially, to sincerely commend the board, and I'm not messing around now. Um, I absolutely commend you for the unity of the proclamation or, or whatever it was to keep the county as a congressional district. Forty years ago, this was attempted again to divide Bucks County, only this time they were going half north to Northampton and then southern and lower Bucks to uh, Philadelphia. And it was a unified board then that voted as you did, and I sincerely commend you for that. And my brief observation, just seeing the, the uh, new website, just the first, first blush, absolutely positively support the idea of going from um, organization to dot gov. It is a government that we are, that the website should be, should be uh, talking about. So I think that's wonderful to make that change. However, as, as you were going through the, the slides, I, I, I don't know whether you can see this, organization government. On, and as things were coming up, the change from the seal, which to me was very governmental, to the map of the county divided up with the, the river and so forth, really struck me as that's an organizational map. The seal said government. And similarly, the one about the Bristol Wharf was very nice, but it would seem to me that would be something that would occur under an organization, sort of a tourist commission thing, as opposed to the picture of the courthouse or the seat of government. Um, as we go forward, just offer those for constructive observations. Again, all the best to you, and thank you for keeping unity on the board and unity in the county. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, just for Mr. Warren, so you know, the, the pictures that you referenced um, rotate. So there's different, there's gotta be pictures from all over the county that rotate through. So, you know, the Bristol Wharf happened to be the one that was up and then you'll be, there is one of the, of the old courthouse and there's ones of a covered bridge and that's one of the things that's gonna be, one of the things gonna be built out is we wanna make sure that we have photographs that represent all different parts of this county. So it's, it kinda just depends on what you happen to see when you turn it on. It's, it's, it's you know, that's the imagery. So. Government. <laughs> is there any other public comment? None. Is there a motion for adjourn? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye.